Welcome to Module 5, Lesson 22, Add and Subtract Fractions with Unlike Denominators. We will decompose fractions, we will draw tape diagrams, we will draw number lines and number bonds. So we have a lot of work to do, we're just going to get right to it. So in the beginning, now it seems kind of ridiculous to demonstrate 2 plus a fourth, because that's obviously 2 and a fourth, but on a tape diagram, what they're asking for is that you have some kind of representation that is two holes, and then the last piece is split into fourths. So we could say that this is one, two, and a fourth. That's all they're looking for. You could do B just as easily. Now C actually looks pretty interesting on a tape diagram. Let me change colors here. So on C, they want two blocks that represent a whole. So let's say these are both my two. Now, out of these two, what's happening? I'm losing a fifth. So in one of the blocks, you need to divide it into fifths and indicate that you have lost one of them. So what do I end up having? I end up having this whole and four more fifths. So I end up having one whole and four fifths left over. Right? I don't have five fifths anymore. I don't have two holes. I lost a fifth. All right, and the drawing shows that. Let's try that one more time. On three, I have three whole parts. So I'm going to divide this into three whole pieces. Now, the first two could represent the number two, but on the last one, I'm losing some. I'm losing a fourth. According to the problem, it says minus a fourth. So go ahead and draw your last piece into fourths and cross out one of the fourths to indicate that you have lost it and label the part you have, which is three fourths. So you have two and three fourths. All right. Now in the next section, um, other numbers uh, numbers relate to one another with adding and subtracting. They want you to create um, two subtraction and two addition number sentences, or like we used to call them fact families. So, for example, you would take the largest number and you would take that number twice and you would subtract it from the other numbers. So if I lost 5 eighths, I would have 4 left over. If I lost 4, I would have 5 eighths left over. Now, those two examples, notice that 4 and 5 eighths is shown in both, just like it says here. 5 eighths is shown in both, just like here. And 4 is shown in both, just like here. You have to have all three digits in each number sentence. If you created something new, then you did something wrong. All right? Now the last two are going to end with the largest number, 4 and 5 eighths. So the, the addition ones should end in the large number. The subtraction ones should start with the large number. So if you were to add 4 to 5 eighths, you would have 4 and 5 eighths. If you were to add 5 eighths to 4, you would have 4 and 5 eighths. All right? I'll let you do B. On All right, I had something interesting happen here with the video. So I might have placed these scenes out of order. Sorry if I did that. Right now I'm looking at E and F, where we're subtracting with number bonds. So on E, you cannot subtract 7 eighths from 3 because we don't have eighths minus eighths to work with. We don't have like denominators. So we'll change 3 into something that's worth 3, like 2 and 8 eighths. Now isn't 2 and 8 eighths still 3? 2 and a whole? Yeah, it's still 3. But now we could easily subtract 7 eighths. And we'd be left with the 2 and an 8 left over. Now let's try that for, for F where 26 can turn into 25 and 10 tenths. That is still 26, right? 25, 
and 1 make 26. But now we could take away 7 tenths. And I'll have my 25. And I'll have my 3 tenths left over. All right. If you have any more questions about adding and subtracting with unlike denominators, using number lines, using number bonds, using tape diagrams, then see me and I'll be glad to help. Thanks. Page, okay. Now on C and D here, we have to use number lines. And it actually works out kind of like the tape diagrams. I, I kind of like it actually. It looks pretty cool. So on our number line, we're going to want to indicate where we're at on this line. Now for C, it says that we're at 7 and we lose a fraction. Do we lose a whole? Do we ever go from 7, lose some, and get down to 6? No. If we lost 5 fifths or a whole, we would get down to 6. So I know my number is somewhere between 6 and 7. Let me show you how I did that on the next one. I'm not done, but let's just practice that again. On the next problem, I have 3 and I'm losing a fraction. Do I lose a whole? Do I lose 10 tenths? No. I never get to 2, so I know my number is somewhere in between 2 and 3. It's lower than 3, but it never hits 2. And then you divide the section in between, the space in between, by what fractional parts we're talking about. So on number C, or letter C, we're working with fifths. And on D, we're working in tenths. So let's cut these up into fifths. and tenths. And then you simply indicate how much you lost. So I started at 7, I go down 4. And I land here. And on the next one I had started at 3, and I go down 3. 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths. Alright? And then you can count where you're at by counting up. I'm at 6 and 1 fifth. And on the next one, I'm at 2, and how many tenths is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm at 2 and 7 tenths. Alright? Now as you go on to the last section on number 4, you are to work on it without any diagrams. They just want you to use number bonds. So, when you have 6 holes and you're going to take away a piece, it's difficult because we don't have denominators to subtract. So you need to turn the 6 into something that has a denominator. And since we're using fourths, we should call it 5 and 4 fourths. Now think about it. Where did Mr. Osborne get 5 and 4 fourths? Isn't this 4 fourths a 1? And isn't 5 and 1 6? So I just kind of manipulated the number into something we could work with. Because I can have 5 and 4 fourths and lose a fourth. And now I have 5 and 3 fourths. Okay? So you want to make it so you have a mixed number that you could use, that you could subtract with. So 7 can't subtract. Right? Minus 2 tenths. So it's best to turn 7 into one number less and then what number would make the one that you lost? 10 tenths. Now, I still have 7, right? 6 and 1 make 7. I just kind of changed my number a little bit. Now I could lose 2 tenths and show that you would get 6 and 8 tenths left over. Right? Let me practice that again with you.